And we are back and I am joined once again by my partner in commentary, Justin. Yeah. And we'll be going on to the final of the Singapore Regional Championships. Between Ryan and Leon, uh, Leon we previously saw in the semi-finals. Riding an <laughs> amazing wave of luck all the way to the final at the expense of a previously unbeaten Melvin K. Well, um, well, Melvin can't really be too salty either because I believe the amount of CP he gets from just even placing third or fourth is quite substantial. And uh, he's now first in the APEC region for yes. when it comes to points, uh, CP points. Uh, yeah. Assuming Yoko doesn't pull off some finish as well, but yeah. Yeah, that well, remains to be seen. Let's see um, if Riot is able to beat Leon or Leon will make this a Malaysia victory in the We Singapore did see regions. Ryan, of course, play against pretty much identical team <laughs> piloted by Yang Tzu. And edging it out, but again, aided by some questionable plays on Young Tzu's part. Mm. So we can see that the matchup really is not in Ryan's favour. Yeah, I, I do expect uh, Leon to have um, advantage over Ryan, as, especially since the Smirgle Xerneas call is um, quite strong actually. Puts a lot of pressure on Ryan, which I'm not sure he can answer. Ryan, as we saw, didn't really fare all that well when Young Tzu did bring Smirgle Xerneas against him. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, there is a small chance that uh, the Dark Void could miss, but I, I feel that as long as Leon gets the Geomancy up on the Smirgle, uh, Smirgle, on the Xerneas, then um, he pretty much has a very big advantage over Ryan. Yeah, Ryan doesn't really have any Pokemon other than the Ferrothorn and even maybe even the Groudon to really absorb kits from the, Geom from the Geomancy booster Xerneas. Yeah, it, Rikosa just goes down. Indeed. Um, and even, even with all the resist, a plus two is just going to tear through and Moonblast is a tweak here on everything. Ryan's only answer to the Xerneas is the Ferrothorn, which I believe uh, Leon will be able to control yes. quite well. So um, we'll see. And uh, Ryan does, unlike Melvin, Ryan does not have the Kyogre to fight the Weather War. So he's not able to, to stop Leon from going for eruptions with the Garden. Yeah, I mean, he does have the Rayquaza, but that is... Doesn't stop um, the eruption. Yeah. It, nope. Doesn't stop Doesn't it, yeah. stop the reaction. Just neuters it by the, not giving it the boost. Well, I'm actually more concerned that uh, Rayquaza will probably go down to Xerneas anyway. Yeah, so uh, I mean, what Melvin had for him the previous game was that uh, Kyogre still had decent bulk, was able to take, I think, a, a plus two, two Dazzling Gleam. Moonblast. Uh, Moonblast, even. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure that will be in favor of Ryan. In this Moonblast is always, Moon, plus two Moonblast is always a damage roll on uh, Kyogre, thanks to Kyogre's special bulk. But Melvin clearly investing more than usual. <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, but well, Ryan not using Kyogre this time with the Groudon, which arguably has a better matchup against Xerneas, but. Can he hit the Precipice Blades? Um, yeah, and there, there are a lot of things going against Ryan's favour, I believe. But this is a best of three. Um, and we still see, happen. we saw him bring it back against level 51, or mm -hmm. rather against Yang in the top 8 game. Well, the matchup is not in his favour, but we'll see if Ryan can pull enough tricks to keep Leon off his guard. Since Leon is likely the one who has a more predictable set of plays. And maybe Ryan can fluster him by going out of the norm. Yeah, indeed. Um, the Weavile requires a... Not, not really ideal. Very, As we saw, yeah. we found Rikosa really not doing his part against uh, Yuan Yang Tzu in, in top 8. But if Ryan defaults to it out of maybe a sense of security, this could get ugly. Yeah, very quickly. And um, the top match, the top matches might end very quickly. Right, uh, yeah, that's just what Geomancy what, uh, Geo on Xerneas gives us. Yeah. I believe we are going to team preview shortly. Both players have connected. Yeah, and we will take one final look at the players' teams. Yeah. Um, Leon's team, the Grou as we've seen earlier, the Groudon, Talonflame, Xerneas, Kangaskhan, Smeargle, and Salamence. We have yet to see any of the players of this team bring out the Salamence. <laughs> Ryan, of course, packing the, uh, the Groudon, Ferrothorn, Weavile, Cresselia, Kangaskhan, and Rayquaza. So no weather war in this battle other than perhaps Rayquaza. But again, no way to stop Leon from going for eruptions if you get, get the chance to. Yeah, and um, I think one of the underrated Pokemons on Leon team, Leon's team was actually the Talonflame. It did a lot of work for him and could have potentially saved him um, a lot of uh, heartache yes. by ending the matches the against uh, Melvin. Uh, so I do expect to see that come into play as well. Um, although Ryan Chum's Crest could be offering a Trick Room mode but Ryan's, well again, Ryan doesn't really want to go Trick Room into a Dark Void. True, very true. Yeah, um, so Leon, do we expect to see once again the Xerneas Smiggle? He's shown very little need to move away from that call. Yeah. And looking at a team like Ryan's, which doesn't really handle Xerneas all that well, I think he will go for it. Yeah, so I, I guess the pressure and is really, on. He's had, he's, he's had very little reason to change from the call that worked for him, which is Smiggle, Xerneas in the front. And Groudon and Talonflame at the back. Well, so the pressure is on Ryan Cham to be able to answer to the leads that 
Leon Le has. And we will see. I actually, oh. we do see the Talonflame Kangaskhan come out for Leon. Are we going to see the Weaver Rayquaza? We do we see, see the, the Weaver Rayquaza, though not a, as bad a position as it could be. Since he, Ryan is not looking at the Xerneas. Yeah, um, it's actually pretty interesting because, I mean, Weaver does have the faster fake out, but on Leon's side, his Talonflame does have the quick guard, I believe. Weaver is faster than Talonflame, so Weaver should get a fake out off oh, even, even before the quick yes. guard. Quick guard and quick guard having the same priority bracket. Well, I mean, Otto Leon didn't use it, he does have the option to let his Kangaskhan remain um, in um, non mega form, perhaps with the inner focus to take the fake out. Well, or we see Ryan Sham go for a faint Dragon Ascent. I think Ryan got burned very badly by the last time he tried that play. I don't think he's gonna try it again. Yeah. Because does go Mega, so Delta Stream is going to kick in this turn. Are we going to see Leon Mega as Kangaskhan as well? Oh, no Mega from the Kangaskhan, so Kangaskhan, but even with the Quick Guard, so no. Actually, Quick Guard going before Fake Out. So, and Kangaskhan goes for the Fake Out onto the Rayquaza. The non Mega Fake Out, so. Well, Leon, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure what he was trying for that turn. If he really was going for the Quick Guard, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I really am unsure why he went for the non Mega Fake Out as well. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the and the Talon Flame actually revealing itself to be a jolly two five two speed Talon oh, Flame. So it was able to block the fake out from. So it actually outspeeds Weaver by one. Hmm. A rare Talon Flame that goes all the way. Very interesting. Well, I suppose yeah. in this meta game, if Weaver is going to be be relevant, you, it's it's a it's a it's a relevant calculation. Put your Talon Flame above the Weaver to block the fake out. Yeah. Okay. So well, not much has changed except the fake out. Oh, okay. We do see the Tailwind, and actually he has not Mega evolved his Kangaskhan yet either. Is he? Does he? I think he has a Salamence at the back. Could be. Oh, uh, we see the knockoff. Knockoff knocks off the life orb. And Dragon yeah. Stand is slightly going into the Kangaskhan in his non mega form. Will pick up the KO. Yep, we'll see if Cham picks the right target here. And yep, Kangaskhan goes down to a Dragon Ascent. But Rikosa will get his defense reduced and take a life orb recoil as well. And we are likely to see. Since, there were, since Leon adamantly refused to Mega Evolve his Kangaskhan, I think there has to be a Salamence at the back. Mm, yeah, at, at this point, I think you'll inc incentivize Ryan to switch out to Rayquaza. Oh, the Xerneas oh, comes, comes out, out with the speed boost. Does Ryan Tailwind. think his Rayquaza can take? Uh, I don't think he can. Brave Bird. There is a minus. Or rather, does Ryan want to go for the Extreme Speed on the Talonflame this turn? Well, I'm not sure because Quick Guard could block the Extreme Speed, correct? And it will break even for the turn, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the the, the partners, I think Xerneas will definitely come out. Oh, we do see the Extreme Speed. Extreme speed. It will KO the Talon Flame. Will we see a Geomancy here? So, Ryan, Ryan unable to knock off the Power Hub this game because Xerneas is boosted by the Tailwind. And we see the oh Dazzling Gleam come out. It will KO the Rayquaza and bring Weaver down, down, down to his Sash. Are we going to see the knockoff? Even though, but that would be a questionable play because if it Geomancy, it would be a, it would be a pointless. Yeah. Or are we gonna see the icicle crash for damage? Or we oh, see we the knockoff knock and the Geomancy play is kind of taken out of Leon's hands right now. Are we? The last one has to be the Salamence for Leon, or the non Mega of his Kangaskhan really makes little sense. Well, at this point, the Weavile going down might actually be a good thing for Leon if his last one is a Mance. Because that's uh, one way that he's. But uh, he has the speed advantage right now with Tailwind. Yeah, with Tailwind. And I don't think Ryan will be able to protect his Weavile. Yes. Yes, review all his moves by now. Fake out, feint. And it is the Mance. Crash and knock off. It is the Mance. Which explains why Leon was unwilling to mega evolve his. Oh, but we see the Crystal here. Not what Mance really wants to be seeing. Yeah, and Weavile would probably want to go for a, a final Hail Mary feint into one of uh, <laughs> Leon's slots before he goes down. Uh, yeah, the question is maybe what does. Actually, would Leon want to target the Weaver? Because, I mean, it's a sitting duck at, at this point. Maybe a better play would be to focus on taking out the Cresselia. But he does not want to eat Icicle Crash onto his Salamence. Oh, well, true, that is true. But if even though Intimidated, the Salamence would be able to survive. But then we'll just put it in kill range of Fane in the next turn. <laughs> well, we will see, and we see a Hyper Voice. Yeah, Hyper Voice comes out to finish off the Weaver, and I think we are going to see a Moon Blast into the Cresselia as Cresselia goes for a Trick Room. Trick Room. Yep, we do see Moonblast come out. Are we going to see a special attack drop, which could come into play? Yeah, Even gets going to end the special, special attack, attack drop. drop. Leon just getting all the rolls to go for him today. Well, uh, Ryan Sham does get up the trick room. And we're going to see the Grounded end game for Ryan. I'm not really sure it's something that he wants, especially since the Mance is not hit by the Precipitate Blades. But I believe we have seen Dragon Claw and Ryan Sham's Grounded. Indeed. But, uh, well... In this case, maybe he wants to prioritize taking out the Xerneas first. 
No, I think Z the Salamence is clearly the bigger threat. <laughs> Unfortunately for Ryan, I don't believe his Cassella carries Moonlight. Or oh, it will come into it will come in handy right about now. Yeah, indeed. And well, Leon, I believe, does have the option to protect here. So um, with both of them down to two mons each, it's really a matter of calling the protects. Ryan somewhat of a slight advantage because he does have a speed advantage with Trick Room. Mm -hmm. And he can potentially, I think, one shot both of Leon's Pokemon? Um, not entirely Zernius, sure. With the Fire Punch on Xerneas. Mm. I'm not really sure he can. Then again, does Cressida have a helping hand to help that along? Yeah, yeah I mean, and I mean, Leon, what Leon has for him is that both his men's and his uh, Xerneas does have spread moves. So he doesn't really. Oh, have we do not see any Vortex come out. Cressida does get the IT but. He did have a special attack reduced by Moonblast. So and we're going to see the Fire Punch come out from the Groudon onto the Xerneas or into oh. the Salamence, which hangs on. That's pretty questionable, actually. Does Ryan not have the Dragon Claw? I don't think so. And we see Cresselia go down, and Mance using the Draco Meteor here. Dealing quite a big chunk of damage there to But now Salamence is really unable to touch the Groudon, barring a Draco Media critical hit. Which, given Leon's <laughs> run of luck, he is going to get at some point. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Leon probably wants to protect the Xerneas and, and just do more chip damage with his Salamence. Oh, the Groudon actually goes for the protect here. Trying to fish out which of his opponents goes for protect. And as he sees the Salamence. Goes for the protect, actually. Oh, we see both. Xerneas oh, he just goes for the Moonblast. Moon Huh. Well, the, that, that plays a bit of tricks on Ryan's mind now because, I mean, does he want to really target the Salamence who is already at minus two? And, and but Xenia can protect next turn. Exactly. So it's. Oh, he goes for the Fire Punch onto the Mens. Uh, I, I think it's pretty clear to us that the Garden does not have Dragon Claw. <laughs> well, uh, Moonblast from. But with the Protect next turn, I believe. Leon should be able to stall Ryan out of Trick Room turns. Yeah, indeed. Now Xenus just has to go for the Protect. Yep, Xenus goes for the Protect. I'm nothing that Ryan Champ can do. And Trick Room runs out. A pretty straightforward Moonblast KO for the Xenus. And Ryan... Really... <laughs> choosing the wrong Pokemon to target. Yeah, I, I, you could you could feel that maybe if he had targeted the Xerneas, which was more threatening. Mm. Not so much not more threatening, but knowing that the Salamence was going to Dracometer and reduce his own threat to the ground. So now he knows for sure that the Salamence is a special Salamence. Though again, the fact that he brought it into a rig and preserved it for the Rayquaza matchup would have told him that anyway. Mm. Yeah, well, we did see we The danger for Ryan here is that Leon actually did not play to his more dangerous outs and Ryan still lost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, now I guess Leon can play to his um, RNG since he does have one match advantage. Exactly. Yeah, he can he can bring the Smilgar Xerneas and actually we do expect to see him bring it, right? At some point, he has to bring the Smilgar Xerneas because again, it's, it just handles the Weaver Rayquaza lead fairly well. Well, um, maybe he called that Ryan would adjust to his uh, Sm Smilgar Xerneas lead, that's why he didn't. And Ryan just let Weaver Rayquaza? Well, again, as, as we did point out, Weaver requires us a bit of a comfort lead for Ryan, but he has no idea what to do. So even if it's not the best situation, it's one he's most comfortable with. He knows his outs. He knows that he has a chance against every lead. Now well, again, he has to call it perfectly. And yeah, the hindrance is still Xerneas on the onside. That's um, one of the Interestingly, key Ryan did not choose to bring his Ferraton, mm. recognizing that Leon probably carries way too many threats for Ferraton to really try. Yeah, I mean the Turn Flame, the possible Groudon, Especially with the control that uh, Smilgar can provide as well. Well, we'll be moving on to round 2 and alright, we see Leon still stick with the same lead, um, Talonflame and Kangaskhan from the first round. And Ryan does stick with the, with the, with the Weaver Rayquaza. Very interesting. Well, that, the, the question now begs the question, does Leon not Mega Evolve his Kangaskhan as well? If he does, then we, we can be sure that the Salamence is at the back again. Yeah. And if it worked for him to, in Game 1, there's really no reason for him to change it up yeah, as well. Yeah, indeed. Oh, well, since this is uh, the same matchup as the same leads as the first round, do we expect any changes here? Um, maybe Ryan won't let his Rayquaza eat the fake out for free? And 
and it's hard well, to say because now, at least Ryan knows that the Talon Flame will be able to block the fake out from the Reval. That's true. The fake out from the Reval, sorry. But again, if now the Leon knows that, will he even go for the quick guard? True, very true. And I mean he does have the fame to break through. Because of does Mega Evolve? Are we gonna see the Kangaskhan Mega Evolve? Nope. Weaver oh. does get a fake off unhindered onto Kangaskhan. Who is in the focus? And Kangaskhan goes for the fake out onto the Rayquaza. Ryan walking right into the opening. And a Brave Bird comes out from Leon. Should be able to do a decent amount of damage to the Weaver, bringing it down to its Sash. Not even to its Sash, actually. Oh, not really. Yeah, but it is definitely in KO range now. For sure. Though Talonflame is also in KO range to the Extreme Speed. Well, I'm not sure that's the target that Ryan wants to focus down. I mean... Are you, do you really want to focus down a normal Kangaskhan? Touche. <laughs> a faint Extreme Speed onto the Talonflame will take it out here. Even if a potential Quick Guard. Hmm. Yeah, but Kangaskhan still... I mean, even if it's in non Mega Form, a Double H would still do quite a lot of damage onto the Rayquaza. It's probably preferable to taking another Brave Bird. Or letting him get Tailwind up. Yeah, well, and at the very least, if he does go for that play, he will be able to preserve his Weavile. Maybe get a knockoff and um, deny the Xerneas' Geomancy. Oh, but Ryan does not go for the Fane Extreme Speed play, choosing instead to eat a Brave Bird. Likely into the Weavile slot. Yep. Ryan, again, perhaps feeling the pressure and not making the optimal place. And we should see an attack from Rayquaza here. It he does go for a Dragon Sand to finish off the Kangaskhan. But with the defense drop, he is not going to enjoy taking a Brave Bird from the yeah, Talonflame. Yeah, it, it is vulnerable to the Brave Bird. Otto, maybe if the Extreme Speed is able to catch... But without the Fane available to him now, Ryan does not have the, f uh, the way to guarantee that Quick Guard does not deny his Extreme Speed. Yeah, but if you think about it, that's just a dead turn. So the... The key question now is... The dead turns, are, dead turns are very much in Leon's favour right now. Yeah. Leon can do much more with dead turns than Especially Ryan can. Especially with Xerneas, yes. So the question now is... And Rayquaza, don't, let's not forget, is sitting at minus one defence. And we do see a Xerneas comes out. Quite dangerous for Ryan, actually at this point. Again, if Ryan chooses to go for the exchange speed to finish off the Ten Flame, or even walk into a Quick Guard. If he walks into a Quick Guard and Xerneas gets the Dazzling Gleam KO, Ryan gets taken up Trick Room is really a constellation price. And Rayquaza, yep, goes for the Protect here. Are we going to see the Quick Guard from the Titan Flame? Or nope. we see the Brave Bird into the Rayquaza. A Dazzling Gleam will chip Cresselia. Hopefully not getting a critical hit as he did previously. And yep. Cresselia gets Trick Room up. But in the mean... Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, Leon played that quite well. If he went for the Geomancy, then definitely Rayquaza will have a speed advantage here. But he will get the boost. And not taking any damage to the process. I think there was a free Geomancy there. Well, Ryan has to ask himself is he going to be able to take uh, Brave, Brave Bird at minus one defense? Well, I mean, I don't he does have he the can. extreme speed to kill the. But again, he can walk into a quick guard. And the opportunity here is for him to get an attack onto the Xerneas since he is now faster. Hey, no, he's not. Yeah, exactly. Because the Xerneas he has not Geomancy. Yeah. Xerneas so goes for the protect. protect. Will we see the extreme speed from the Rayquaza? Rayquaza yeah, does go for the extreme speed, it will finish off the Talon Flame and grab and Leon will be forced to bring in his last Pokemon. Eh hey, no, actually no. Not yet. Kangasan yeah. has not fainted yet, yeah. No, uh Kangasan went down. Oh yeah, went to Dragon yeah, Ascent. He went to Dragon Ascent. So, so we are gonna see Leon's the Sun come out for Leon. Sun does come out and now hmm, I think the Ice Beam onto the Sun is um straightforward play. It's not gonna I think extreme speed onto Ice Beam will kill Salamence, but it's the it's such an obvious play that and and the Rayquaza is um, at minus one, so that could factor in men surviving the combo. Now that Cresselia has not been reduced by Moonblast, I don't think Salamence is going to be able to take that hit. Well, but, well men's could always protect here. Yes, the very obvious play on men's is to protect. And but I mean, Xerneas Leon has not like always gone for the most obvious and play. And no switches here. I actually expected Ryan to switch out his Rayquaza. I don't think he set. wants the Groudon to take any amount of free damage, considering it's his answer under Shrek Room. Alright, then we see the man's Salamence does go for the protect. protect. Fairly straightforward play on Leon's part. As Extreme Speed goes into the Xerneas, picking up some free damage. Though again, at minus one, not going to do much. And Dazzling Gleam. Oh, Alright, Ice Beam on to... Oh, Xerneas actually goes for the Geomancy here. And now Rayquaza is faster than both Xerneas and Salamence under Trick Room. 
I... Um, interesting play, that's all I can say. Um, well, if he does manage to solve out the 3-room turn, then Leon will have a very big advantage over Ryan. So Ryan is kind of put on a timer. He has to he has to take get rid of the Xerneas as fast as possible. And his Miracle is at minus one, so Dragon Ascend will not get the KO. Hmm. Well, you have to imagine he's going for the Salamence this turn. Yeah, I mean the men's did protect last turn. Uh, it's, it's pretty much a sitting duck this turn. The double target with the Ice Beam and even Dragon Ascend now that he is the slowest thing on the now that he's faster than the other two. Right then, what will Chum do? Brian's a lot of pressure on him, actually. A fairly straightforward play this turn, I would think. Going for the Salamence. Yeah, but would, would Leon want to protect his Xerneas? He would not, because the Salamence target is pretty obvious. So he want to get as much free damage. Cressella, oh, yep. Oh, but yep. Delta Stream in play here. But the Dragon Ascent will come off with the Life Orb boost. Will it be enough to finish off the Salamence? Minus one, Dragon Ascent goes into the Salamence. With the Mega Rayquaza, Salamence goes down! And it will be Xerneas against the wall. A boosted Xerneas, but... We well, do have a Groudon at the back, under Trick Room. With well, two I'm more turns of Trick Room yet to go. Yep, Dazzling Gleam will finish the Rayquaza off here. Not going to stand a chance against the boost and its defense drops. I almost forgot about Delta Stream over there. With the Dragon Ascent, I don't think that the calculation was really in question. Well, we do see the Groudon uh, making... So you see, that was, a, that was a very big misplay for Leon there. Giving Ryan access to the extreme speed play. Uh, Ryan gave access to the Dragon Ascent play. Because previously, he could only double target the Salamence with Ice Beam and Extreme Speed. Which would not have killed thanks to the Delta Stream. Yeah, I mean, going for Geomancy under the Trick Room, I, I guess he felt that he could um, stall out the Trick Room. Yes. But giving the Rayquaza a chance to attack the Salamence with his strongest attack, Devon at minus one. Man curtains for the Salamence. We've all seen how strong Dragon Ascent is. Alright, oh, we see Cressella going for a helping hand. But Xerneas yeah. probably going for the Protect. Yep. Oh, no, oh, no Protect. Fire Punch into the Xerneas. With the helping hand boost, with the Sun boost, Xerneas will go down. And we are moving to a game three. Uh, that was pretty close, actually, I think. Even given Leon misstepping more than a few times. As was the case in the, in the set against Melvin as well. Yeah, I mean, Ryan didn't do very well in the early first round. I mean, he the way walked right into a turn one. Yeah, exactly. And the fake out on the Kangaskhan did, uh, did nothing. He had to have known that Leon just wasn't going to mega his Kangaskhan. Well, um, I guess maybe he felt that uh, Leon would protect his Xerneas from the fake out. It was too obvious. But he could always quick guard the Xerneas. Oh, now, wait, wait, hold on. It was Talon Flame and Kangaskhan. Was, yes. Yeah. Uh, hmm. He so always quick guard the fake out. Yeah, he went for the fake out onto the Kangaskhan, knowing that A, Terran Flame was faster than him and could block it, and B, Kangaskhan did not mega in the previous game. And Salamence had done work for Leon. So Leon was always going, well, no, maybe not always, that's a strong word, but Leon would be more inclined, more, more, more inclined to use his Mega Salamence in game two. Yeah, so maybe the Weavile isn't such a good option for Ryan. Well, here. we are going to game three, and are we going to see the Smeagol Zernius lead? Yeah, we've not seen that from Leon yet, actually. Oh, well, this is final game. The, region, the, the winner of the Regional Championships will come out of this game. Are we going to see the Smeagol's And, and we, we do see, see the, the Smeagol's Smeagol Smeagol yes. <laughs> If there's any time to bring it, bring it <laughs> in the last round. And we, oh dear, we <laughs> do see the Weavile Rekwaza from Ryan, which does not enjoy facing Smeagol Zernius. Well, I, I mean, the fake out onto the Zernius is pretty obvious. Um, Leon's, like, Leon's default response to a faster fake out so far has been to double protect. Mm. And there's but no way that Ryan can capitalize on that double protect. Because oh, actually he can. He does have the feint and attack play, but does Ryan really want to go for it? He got burned very badly for it in his Swiss game. I guess hmm, I guess if he does want to go for the feint uh, Dragon Ascent play, he would definitely want to do it on maybe the Xerneas? Yep. Since that's more trouble. if the follow me comes out, Ryan is in deep trouble. Yep. Oh, we do see the feint, but no No protects. follow me. No, are we going to see a follow me from the Smeagol? No, oh, we, oh, we do see, see the follow me. me. So Ryan walking right into a follow me geomancy, I suspect. Yep, this this will not be pretty. Ryan calling the double protect from Leon. Leon not giving it to him. Just as Young Sir did <laughs> in, in the in their first game of their top eight set. Yeah, um definitely now Leon is in a very advantageous position. Um well, I mean, the Dragon Ascent is just going to bring the Smeagol down to his Sash. Uh, I believe the Weavile will be able to pick up the KO next turn. 
I don't think the Weaver wants to pick up the KO next turn actually. Why not? Because the Weaver will want to get more damage onto the Xerneas with Icicle Crash. But I mean the, the Smeagol is just going to follow me away anyway. He can extreme speed, the Smeagol. Oh, that's true. This Rayquaza is going down anyway. Oh, he could protect the Rayquaza. Well, I missed that. Oh, I suppose the Smeagol could protect, which is why the Fane would be the better play. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I missed that. What, what did Sets did Smeagol get? He didn't get any relevant boost. <laughs> Alright. Though he did drop evasiveness. <laughs> Alright, um, well, Charm does now have a big threat that he has to take out in the form of Xerneas, and I'm not sure... I mean, if he does have the Ferrothorn at the back, that is one way he could But answer. he has not brought it at all, making it very unlikely that he carried it for this game. <sighs> and he has no other Pokémon on his team that can, one, that can take out the Xerneas in one hit. Well, oh, we see the Rayquaza go for the Protect here. And the uh, Weavile will pick up the KO on Smeagol with Fate. I'm not entirely sure Ryan really wanted that to happen. He just puts a bigger threat on the field. Yeah, I, but I mean, this, he can't really afford the Smeagol to um, dark void his Pokemon while having a plus two Geomancy. A plus two Xerneas on the field. So, well, if Leon brings in his Talon Flame, which he does, then things are still pretty much pressured. Um, yeah, Ryan is still pretty pressured. Ryan him. has to go for a faint extreme speed onto the Xerneas, at least to get some damage off before he loses both of his leads. He's not gonna KO, obviously, not even with a critical hit on both moves, but it's his only option for damage this turn. Yeah, and Leon will take a commanding position after this turn, I believe. Likely, we're gonna see the Cresselia and the Grazan at the back for Ryan again. Oh, we do see we the do pick up, but Krigar will not block Fane. Are we going to see the Fane come up from the Weavile? We Weavile does go the for the Fane. He will pick up some extra damage onto the Xerneas before they go down. As yep, Rikosa does go for Extreme Speed for some free damage onto the Xerneas. Most notably, putting it in range of Groudon's attacks later in the game. Yep, As Dazzling Ling will pick up a double KO, and Ryan is forced down to his final two, which we suspect is the Cresselia and, and the Groudon. Well, I mean, if Chum brought a Ferrothorn, I don't think you want to face a Talon Blade either. Oh, did see Tailwind? Great we are going to see the Garden Cresselia, I suspect. As we do see the Garden Cresselia, Ryan bringing the same four for each one of these games. And pretty much the obvious Garden Protect while Cresselia goes for Trick Junior. Yeah, I mean, uh, Leon can punish this with a Moonblast Brave Bird. And, well, any of, if any of those moves getting a critical hit would bring down Cresselia and, and Ryan's tournament run. Yeah, so... The pressure really is on Ryan, especially since Leon still has one more Pokemon at the back, which are uh, suspect to be the Mens. Yes. Cresselia has to be around to take out. Otherwise, uh, I don't think Groudon will be able to do much damage to it. Oh, we do see no Protects coming out, actually. It's by his Brave Bird going into the Cresselia or the Groudon. Going into, into the, the Cresselia. Cresselia. Well, Leon correctly, well, well, appropriately predicting that Cresselia was going to trick him out Groudon Protects. See, as Moonblast Moon will go into the Cresselia. Yeah. And easily taking it out, even without a critical hit. Fire Punch will bring down the Xerneas, but Groudon with really no way to handle the Salamence at the back, especially yeah. after the Intimidate. Yeah, things do not look very good for Ryan Chum here. Yep, we do see the mans. Yeah, as we saw earlier, I mean, there there be no reason for Ryan Chum to just keep Fire Punching, punching a mans. Um, and even if he gets the burn, it's not going to affect the man's much since it's special. Yes. A Draco Meteor, even hype, a single target Hyper Voice and a Brave Bird is just going to press the Groudon until he goes down. Yeah, uh, Chum really needed to preserve the Cresselia to be able to take on the man's here. But without protect on the Cresselia, he really had no option. The double target was always incoming and he was just counting on the Cresselia to be able to survive. Which he did not, yeah, surprisingly. And we do see the Brave Bird. Should do a decent amount of damage to Groudon. Plus a single target Hyper Voice, there's really very little way for Ryan to come back from this game. Yep. And we do see the Dragon Claw, but with the Intimidate, I don't think he's be, be able to kill the mans. Not even a 2-hit KO? Yep, not even a 2-hit KO. KO. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have our winner for Singapore Regionals. Leon from Malaysia. Pirating the team that nobody really wanted to see, but has what? gone all the way and takes the regional championship. Well, it is called the, what is it? The showdown, showdown special. special. Yeah, I mean, Youngster did get to top card with it, so it does have his merits. And we did see that, I mean, 
even he didn't have to rely on um, the Smeagol Zernia's lead to be able to win as well. Such is the luck of the draw. And Ryan really having an unfavorable matchup and really not playing to his outs at all. He called the, again, called the double protect, didn't get it, and there was really no way to recover. Well, <laughs> that was, I, I still think that was pretty close actually. No, uh, once the Geomancy went off, Ryan really yeah, had no way to, without the exactly. Ferrothorn at the back, Ryan had no way to recover. True enough. Well, um, Xerneas has always been the bane of, I think, um, Xiang doesn't really have an out to it. The reason he switched to Groudon actually, Ryan was actually playing Kyogre for the longest time and he realized he had an absolutely atrocious Xerneas matchup and switched to Groudon. But unfortunately, even that switch wasn't enough because he couldn't, he couldn't deny the Geomancy on turn 1. Well, um, Leon being able to... I, I think Talonflame did a lot of work for him. I, I mean, Xerneas was the one that netted him a lot of KOs, but a shout-out has to be said to the Talonflame um, with, I mean, the quick guard disrupting the... Was it the... I'm, I'm more inclined to disagree with you. I think Talonflame did more harm to Leon than it helped. If anything, it delayed his victories more than once. The Talonflame really didn't do much at all. There were times, well, not so much that he didn't do anything. It's the opportunity was there. He put the pressure and he could have gone and gotten kills. But actually, Leon kind of made very strange plays with his Talonflame. A quick guard, a tailwind. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. That makes sense, yeah. It's MVP in the sense that he, he, he made him have pretty much guaranteed 100% plays, which pressured Ryan into doing what he didn't want to do. But Leon didn't really play to his outs all that often. Well, but in the end, the strength of Xerneas carrying him through and the Mega Salamence proving we did again, like previously stated, we hadn't seen any of the players playing this particular team bring out the Mega Salamence. Yeah, even though Mens was a uh, part of the core as well. Yes, but this time Leon showed that Mega Salamence had its uses, specifically apparently in the Rayquaza Groudon matchup. But well, I guess it did bring um, spread, which was kind of lacking aside from the Xerneas department there. So uh, that, and it did do a lot of damage as well. Um, yeah. Which kind of begs the question in game one, why didn't Ryan go for Dragon Claw? Yeah, why didn't he? Maybe he predicted a switch? There was no switch, it was 2 on 2. <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea. It could just be a simple misplay, a misclick. Alright, with that, our regional challenges are, are coming to a close soon enough, but before we go, we will be interviewing the both players. Alright, so. We'll be bringing Ryan Chum in, our defeated finalist for our interview. Stay tuned. <laughs> and we are back once again. This time I am joined by our losing finalist, Ryan Chum, who fell short at the very last hurdle in his quest to win a regional championship. But I believe with today's performance, Ryan has secured his invitation to the World Championships this August. I believe he's already booked a flight, in fact, yeah, and yeah. blocked his leave. <laughs> so Ryan was always confident in his ability to make it in and showed it today, but falling short at the very last hurdle against the team that has really been the bane of existence. I think you would agree. All this while, you've not enjoyed fighting that team at all. Yeah, because like, um, I was very, uh, very afraid of Xerneas even though I brought on, but I just have a very bad matchup against Xerneas uh, because I think I have a very bad matchup against uh, Xerneas because I Rayquaza. Even though I have Groudon to mitigate the weakness, but I just, I just lost. La. I mean, game one I lost because I tried to preserve the information that my Groudon has a uh, Dragon Claw. And then uh, I forgot that my Cressilla has a special, special attack drop. drop. I, I assumed that Ice Beam and Fire Punch would have killed uh, Salamence. So, so yeah. So note to the viewers, don't forget the stat drop. Yeah. And it's a final. What, what, how much mileage would you really have gotten out of that information, <laughs> Ryan? Yeah, really? I guess I guess I was too stressed. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Well, in the end, like we said, in the turn three again, you called, he called your bluff. He, he thought you called the double protect. Yeah, in the game three, I went for the Fin and Dragon Ascent because I thought he would double protect. Um, yeah, it was a misplay on my part. I went for the Fake Out onto Xerneas instead of trying to go for the YOLO Dragon Ascent. So, I guess high risk, high reward plays are not that good in the finals. And we did see in the semi-final that against Melvin, whenever Melvin let Kangaskhan into Smegel Zanias, Leon will always react by double protecting. But this time, yeah. I think he had already seen your feint. So he was wary of the feint play coming out. And well, just as I was discussing, we thought that you were too burned by your previous attempt against Yangtze. But 
You tried it again and it ended with the exact same result. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I shouldn't need uh, Rayquaza and Viva. I guess I, I believe we've need... been telling you that all week, but but I just like Rayquaza, so <laughs> it's a strong lead. And against like against his uh his, his other lead was the Kangaskhan Oh, let's discuss that turn that game two as well, shall we, Ryan? Okay. You knew very well that his Talon Flame had quick guard, and it was max speed, so it was faster than Rival. That's A. Now B. You knew that Salamis had done work for him in game one, so he was likely to bring Salamis as his mega. Yeah. So his Kangasan was inner focus. So care to explain to everybody, explain to your country, who you p potentially let down by losing, why you faked out the Kangaskhan in game two. Oh. Cause I, cause, I, cause I thought he won't go for the same play again. I thought he would mega evolve his Kanga Skull. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he will make the same play twice though. So I guess but Salamence well. had done so well for him. Why wouldn't he bring his Salamence again? Oh yeah. <laughs> you say oh yeah now, huh, Ryan? Yeah, I guess yeah. It's too late. But yeah. the thing is, you still won the game uh, shockingly <laughs> somehow. I still don't know how you did it, but you did it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, but I, just, but I still lost. Yep. In the end, that, in the end, like you said, high risk, high reward. There was really no real way you could recover from that turn one. Once Ju Ju Janus went up and you didn't bring Ferraton, there was there was just no way to stop Janus from rampaging through your team. So yeah, she needs Rayquaza. Because I was he has Groudon, so I don't see any reason to bring Ferraton. Except that he didn't bring his Groudon, Ryan. In all three games, I, I don't understand why she had brought Groudon. Oh well. Again, fine margins. Both of you actually brought the same fall to every single game. But I think oh actually no, he switched it up, bringing the Smiggle instead. But I think he, like, he chose to adjust for the game 3 and I, I think you just didn't adjust fast enough. But yeah. again, you, as we've discussed before as well, you've, you have complained about numerous times before. Smegel Zanias is not, uh, it's not a fun matchup for Weaver Rayquaza. You have to call him perfectly. Yeah, I guess when facing up against me again, uh, Zanias, you need to make the correct predictions. If, you, if I make a mistake, it's too late to climb back up. So and it's a very risky matchup, yeah. And again, you went for the YOLO play. Hoping yeah. for that he would make the safe play and you got yes. punished for it sadly. Yes, but he went off he went on the offense play so I couldn't keep up and then I lost. Yeah. yeah that's kind of the game we play in right now. Especially since we you play a very offensive team with Well do you have the Chrysalia mode as well? But do you think do you think you perhaps you might have gone for the Chrysalia lead Catrium up earlier in the game? I don't think I'll lead with Chrysalia because of Dark Void. Smirga, I'll speak Chrysalia and my Groudon. So you will just spam Dark Void. So I think I think leading with uh, Mons faster than Smirga will provide more offensive pressure than a slower Crisera. Unfortunately, the Zanias was there as well to make yes, your life miserable. Zanias. Still the bane of your existence, I believe. It's back to the drawing board to see what else we can come up with to handle Zanias better. I think the whole of Singapore, the whole of Asia Pacific will be taking note of this and really they have to build their teams to handle this call of Groudon Smirga or they could just go in the other direction. Everybody might just play this team and you're gonna face your nightmare every single round. Yeah, uh, I'll certainly make changes. Maybe I won't run Rayquaza again because of Xerneas. I, I don't know. We we'll see how it goes. Yep. Uh, so congratulations on the on the finals on final being the finalist today. You lost, but can't really blame anything else other than well, the YOLO didn't really pay off. Congratulations, Ryan. Congratulations on securing your invite to Worlds. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. And we will go to an interview with our champion shortly. And we are back, and I'm Sunny right here, and with me is the regionals winner, Mr. Leon. Congratulations for getting first place in Singapore regionals. Um, just one question for you first. In one sentence, how will you describe your adventure to Singapore, making it to Top Cut and getting first place? Honestly, it was very unexpected. First, this morning I had a nothing but bad luck and then I was thinking that today might be a bad day but when I came here and I, and I started doing better than I thought I would, might be then I start to feel today might be a good day after all Alright, um, during now that you have won regionals in one word how do you feel? <laughs> I feel very sleepy <laughs> oh, oh, why sleepy? How many hours of sleep do you get? I only slept for one hour last night because I took a very early morning flight this uh, it, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. flight. You only slept for one hour. I see. It must be very, must be. It's very unlucky for you to have to tr travel late night and all that stuff. But really, congratulations on winning this. Oh, just one question. Your talon flame. Yes. I believe it made some very amazing, un unique plays. What don't you think? <laughs> yeah, everyone says doing 
Tom the complete opposite of what they expect. Yes, so I've heard when I was watching the match. <laughs> but what what do you think of uh, you playing Talon Fame overall? Because like like what the crowd say, you've been playing, making plays that they didn't expect. Some very questionable indeed. Yeah. Um, honestly, sometimes I question myself whether to quick guard or not. But apparently, I know that the rival has faint on it. So if I use quick guard and he faints, then the quick guard is nullified. Then I, sometimes I rather go for the brave ball, the tail wing instead. I see. Anyways, congratulations once again, and I think you really deserve some rest. Go get some rest, man. You. Okay. Thank you. And oh, here. With me here, is your crown. Thank you. Just show it, show to the crowd. Show to the crowd and also to the camera. You really deserve it, man. Yeah. And anyways, that concludes uh, today's Pokemon Video Game Championship Regionals here in Singapore. Stay tuned for our premier challenge or mid-season showdown in sometime in the future. Thank you. Thank you.